Hello everybody, I'm Jessica. And I'm Brad. And welcome to The Comfy Corner. So today we are doing our Christmas tier list of our favorite Christmas movies and Christmas specials. Much like the Halloween one, only not as scary. Even though we said that one wasn't going to be scary. Yeah. And then everything on it was terrifying. Whoops. <laughs> Don't well, try to pretend everything. like we avoided, like... <laughs> not everything. Not everything on that was terrifying. I was like, oh hey, this might be scary. And then you were like, ah! <laughs> okay, well, this time... Not scary. Only half of them are scary now. No. No. <laughs> Over half. No. Okay. That Anyways, um, we like all of these uh, Christmas specials and movies. That's why they're on this list. However, we like some of them better than others. So some of them are going to be S and then some of them are going to be like D or C. Or Z if they're that bad. But we... things that, We're not putting anything bad yeah, on there. Yeah. Everything here we like. If there's something that you don't see on here that you like that's Christmas then that's related, probably on our Z tier. <laughs> yeah. It, we, we either hate it or haven't seen it. Or haven't... Yeah, or haven't seen it. Yeah. So yeah, let's get into it. Alright, so number one is How the Grinch Stole Christmas 1966. So this is an oldie but a goodie. See, yes. There's so many... Grinches now and so many like Christmas carols like they all just kind of blend together So I make sure I put them all with the date that they were released on there's what three versions of the Grinch now and Probably the, more than the most recent there's one is Garbage. Well, it wasn't too oh, bad. Than... First one is the 1966 one. Okay, where do you think this should go? A tier? I would probably agree with that, considering that it is continually remade, it had to do something right. And even then, before that, it was a book, right? Yes, it was Dr. a book Seuss. by Dr. Seuss, and this uh, movie version is the most like the book. Like, it is um, the most accurate mm -hmm. to the actual book. And I love the book. I think the, yeah. bo uh, the book is super cute. I also, agree. I love the song in this one. This is where the Grinch song came from, I'm pretty sure. And yeah, for sure. I love um, the scene where he's like slinking around on the ground and like oh, stealing the presents um there's some really cool mm -hmm. uh animation tricks used in this but it is also like really old animation so there is some frame skipping also uh if you had the vhs of this you actually got um the very very old H horton here's a who number two is also how the grinch stole christmas but this one is how the Grinch Stole, uh, stole the, Christmas uh, 2000. This is the live action Jim Carrey one. This is the yes. one that I have much more experience with. Yeah, this one you grew up with and I grew up with the old one. And I watch it every Christmas. It's absolutely insane. And there are parts that I still laugh at and are ridiculous. And other parts that uh, I don't care for and never have. So <laughs> it's a mixed bag of Christmas for sure. Do you want to know where I would put this? Where would you put this? I would also put this on A, but I don't know if I like it more. And this is going to sound blasphemous. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I like it more than the original Grinch or not. I actually think I like it more. So, uh, okay. You know and what? The reason I'm why, not going to argue with that. The reason why is because of the amount of effort they put into this movie. Like, everything oh is God. not a green screen. Like, it's, it's actually... They made the sets, like, you know, they made the cars, they made the faces yeah. of, like, the Who's, like, they actually put, like, you know, plastic molds on them yeah. and stuff, like, Yeah, this. everyone's wearing, like, a bunch of makeup, especially Jim Carrey. A tier, top of A tier right now? Yes, live action Grinch, top of A tier, uh, regular Grinch, uh, right under that, so far. So, the next one is Drumroll. Roll. The Muppet Hold Christmas on. Carol, 1992. S tier, triple S tier, quadruple <laughs> S tier, infinite S tier. Yeah, I knew that this was going to go at S tier. We watch it With every Michael year. Kine. It's got Muppets, which are always funny. Mike, Michael Caine is in it. It's like, okay, that's the thing. You you have this amazing, it opens on in this amazing song about, and that I love, it is my favorite Christmas song, about what a jerk Scrooge is. And at the very end of the song, all of these Muppets are just shouting at him what a horrible person he is. And he turns around, and it's like this big reveal, and he's like, Hello, my name is Michael Caine. <laughs> he doesn't say that, but he, it'd be amazing if he did. I also love Gonzo and Rizzo in this one, and the music is pretty yes. cute. 
and I don't know, There's... it's just, it's very charming, and I don't normally like Muppet movies, but this one is one of the very few exceptions where I, like, actually like the Muppets in this. Oh yeah, it's it's really nice. Michael Caine and Scrooge was a great choice. The Muppets are mm -hmm. hilarious. Uh, there's this sort of like weird skirting of the fourth wall because Gonzo is playing Charles Dickens and Rizzo is like his uh, I don't know assistant or something like. But they they both are the narrators and it's really funny to see them interact with everybody on the story because sometimes it's like they're not there and other times it's like they are there. Right. Uh, there's this scene where uh, they're in the past and Scrooge's teacher is like it's the American way and Gonzo like whispers to him and he's like oh right, right, right. it is the British way <laughs> it's it's yeah. all kinds of silly and really great humor and I highly recommend people watch it not even just once because some of these will say you can watch it once but like this one every Christmas yep this is this is the best okay the next one on our on our list is number four which is Mickey's Christmas Carol 1983 so this one came out before muppet christmas carol and it's the disney version with um scrooge mcduck and i think this is the first time scrooge mm -hmm. mcduck is shown on screen it's just a really great christmas story so uh what do you think of this christmas movie um i mean the christmas carol is a classic story i like it i like the disney twist on it um i think it's pretty good When's but the last time uh, i still like this? muppet christmas carol more Right. What? When's the last time you've seen this? Have you seen this? I can't even Re remember. Recently. We, oh, we yeah. watched this recently. Oh, yeah. That's right. We did. We watched this together. Okay. Uh, it is I think it's pretty shorter. good. I like... Um, yes. So, yeah. This um, this one is shorter. It is a... Uh, not really a TV special, but it's like a short Disney movie. And, yeah. It's really cute. I love Mickey and Minnie. And I love Scrooge mm -hmm. McDuck. Uh, I just like Muppet Christmas Carol better, but this is still a really good watch. I definitely recommend it to people. Uh, where are we putting this it's, one? Um, I think lower A tier. I agree. And that brings us to our yeah. next one, which is Mickey's Once Upon a Christmas. And this one has Goofy in it as well. And Goofy's actually like really cute in this one. Uh, it's got him and Max. And... Um, that he's trying to uh, show Max that there is a Sandy Claus, basically. And it's just super, super cute. Mm. Um, I don't think I've seen this one in a very long time. Okay. I, I don't think I've seen this one for at least a few years, but I remember it being really good. Um, there are, I believe, mm -hmm. three stories in this one. I remember the Goofy one, and I also remember the Mickey and Minnie one. It's another, like, classic tale, but, um, I'm not sure what the tale is called. It's where, um, two people get, uh, give away a gift to give a gift for another person, basically. Um, and mm -hmm. that's what Mickey does for Minnie, and Minnie does for Mickey, and it's, it's really cute. I just remember oh. this being a really, really cute, um like really cute Christmas I remember uh, that segments and then it was a Huey Dewey and Louie one where um, it's like the classic um, wish for more more Christmases and then learning the um, that there's a reason why Christmas only comes once a year I think this is also lower A I think I'm gonna put this right behind so, Mickey's Christmas Carol speaking of Disney though our next uh entry do you want to uh, you actually have a lot more experience with this one than i, I grew do up with but this i one. still enjoy it this is beauty and the beast the enchanted christmas 1997 and yeah this is one that i grew up with as a kid and i actually really really like um this disney sequel it's one of the few Disney sequels that anybody likes. Um, I don't know why yeah. it's as good as it is. Uh, it's got, I do. <laughs> it's got Tim Curry in it. <laughs> there you go. probably helps. But the animation is actually oh, yeah. pretty well done, too. It's not the best, but it's pretty good for a Disney sequel. And I love the songs in it. They got Belle's original voice actor uh, back, and she actually sings a couple songs in this, which is like really awesome mm -hmm. now this is uh this is really cute it's about um bell still being locked in the castle this is before beast and them uh return back to normal so bell's still locked in the castle and then christmas is coming around 
and Belle is trying to get everyone together to hold a Christmas party and then the beast doesn't like Christmas because apparently that's the day that he got turned into a beast. Um, so he's trying to somewhat stop her and also there is an organ involved played by Tim Curry that also wants to stop her because yeah. he doesn't want to go back to being a human for whatever reason and chaos is, ensues and yeah you'll have to see it to find out the end okay so where are we putting uh, uh Beauty and Beast? where do you think it should go because you i think Again, you like this a lot more than i do i still really like it but i think well actually i think i'm gonna put this one at b really yes now we do like all the videos that we have on this list so everything we like it's just yes. a matter of ranking them how much we like them compared to others um this is a really cute movie but i don't think it's as good as the other ones that we currently have up there so i'm gonna put it at b tier all right you have to you you're introducing yeah. the next one and talking about it because okay. uh you're way more into this one than i am okay um, and uh we just so. I, I think i saw it for like a second time of my life recently yeah so Number seven on our list is Annabelle's Wish, 1997. Now this movie has really, really bad animation. That being said, yeah. everything else about this movie is pretty good. <laughs> it's just the animation is is not good. It's um, it's very. You could tell they were on a tight budget with the animation. But the voice acting is very good. The story is at my absolute favorite. And um, the message that it has is just so adorable. And I wish that it was animated better because it has like real, a really cute song and just like a really cute idea. Um, but it is really derpy to look at. Um, oh, so, yeah. Now, as a kid, I didn't notice how bad the animation was. Um, so I loved this as a kid because it's about a cow on a farm and she wants to become a reindeer. Um, and it's about her wish to become a reindeer, but also she has a friend who is a human and he can't talk. So um, she ends up uh, befriending him and they um, have like a really, really cute ending. And I'm not going to spoil it in case anyone wants to watch it, but uh, it's just a really cute message and a cute story. And I think any child would love this movie. And uh, I think you're right. I really like it, but I'm also going to put this in B tier just because the animation Above is so below, dirty. Beauty and the Beast. I'm going to put it behind yeah. Beauty and the Beast. Because okay. Beauty, yeah, the animation Beauty is and the Beast wrong. has better animation than. Annabelle's Wish, but again, I love Annabelle's Wish. It's very nostalgic for me. So, next up is one that I think I have more experience with, but uh, is, did I show this to you for the first time recently, or had you no, already seen I, it? I had seen it once when I was younger. Okay, so this is uh, gonna be All of the Other Reindeer. This is a Christmas special about a dog named Olive, <laughs> and uh, her, ping her penguin friend named Martini and that is the joke uh but uh at one point santa's like oh one of the reindeer got injured so we need all of the other reindeer to uh come to the north pole and help out and at at first i thought like oh this is ridiculous that's obviously uh you know all of not all of but then i were rewatching this recently she actually says that it's like oh yeah that's probably how that works and then um but the reason she ends up going to the north pole anyway is is because her owner is an idiot because <laughs> he has a, all of talks and like i guess some animals can talk or something i don't know if it's all or only some of them i don't know how it works reindeer can talk penguins can talk dogs can talk but the owner like comes home one day and he's like oh all of you don't like you know get sticks or dig holes or dog like stuff dog. you're so yeah you don't act like a dog and i'm like you have a talking dog you stupid motherfucker like how picky could you be about this <laughs> i'd love a talking dog that'd be awesome and then all of it's like oh, i'm sad because the owner's sad because christmas is canceled so i'm gonna go try and save christmas so he'll be happy and uh 
he like he before she even leaves he he apologizes but she mishears him and so yeah adventure to the north pole saves christmas it's adorable and there's an evil mailman uh it's okay. really good and there's yeah. a lot of little cute jokes in it yeah i think it's good it's it's also like i think pretty good for adults as well um because of all the inside jokes that are in there um i think this would for me it's really hard to put it above beauty and the beast but i'd probably put it above annabelle's wish but that's just me where do you what do you think mm, i'm i don't want to put it above annabelle uh so a lower b tier for all of yes next number nine is the original well maybe not the original but the claymation of rudolph the red-nosed reindeer 1964 so i love this rudolph the red-nosed reindeer um because of the misfit toys and i love the elf that wants to become a dentist and i love the um abominable snowman creature because it scared the living hell out of me as a kid oh yeah and now as an adult i'm just like oh, yeah anyone so who saw this <laughs> yeah anyone who saw this as a kid was terrified of that abominable snowman it doesn't even look I, like looking back it doesn't look too scary but the way they sort of set it up in the atmosphere when it's around is just horrifying mm -hmm. and the the music and his sound like the sound that they use for his roar is just so scary but it's a it's a fun classic christmas movie that i think everyone should see at least once agreed so where are we putting it i mean i like it less than olive <laughs> <laughs> okay can we put it behind olive at B. Okay, so that's the lowest B tier right now. Yes. Nothing's getting gone in C or D tier. That's good. Yet. <laughs> so far. Next is number 10 is Santa Claus is Coming to Town 1970. I love this movie so much. I like this better than Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. It's another claymation classic Christmas movie. This one came out after Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer but it came before another Christmas movie, and it's actually the sequel to another Christmas movie that a lot of people like that we'll talk about next. This is basically the classic story of Santa Claus and how he became Santa Claus, and I love um, the Winter Warlock in this, and I love the songs in this. They are a lot of fun, and uh, oh, I love the, um, the Tinkers, or um, the like the elves uh, that help uh, Kris Kringle become Santa Claus. Like, I just think it's really cute. But yeah, this one, I I liked it more than Rudolph. I like this one more than Beauty and the Beast. This is lower A tier for me. I will put it behind uh, Mickey's okay. Once Upon a Christmas. Good. And that brings us to our next one. And this one, I think more people are familiar with it. And uh, so number 11 is The Year Without Santa Claus, 1974. And this is the sequel to Santa Claus is Coming to Town. And the reason why I think more people know about this one is because this one is with uh, Snow Miser and Heat Miser. This one I don't actually remember if I've ever seen. <laughs> You don't I'm think... I'm very I've seen, uh, I've, behind on my. The last uh, time Christmas I watched stuff. this was a while ago. We need yeah. to rewatch this one this year because I haven't seen this one forever either. I don't actually remember a lot that happens in it. I just remember that a lot of people like aren't believing in Santa Claus anymore or don't care about Santa Claus anymore. So he decides to go on vacation, and then some elves try to convince them to um, like they take a reindeer to town and try to convince. Um, the people to believe in Santa or like you know try to get people to get into the Christmas spirit again so that Santa will come back to town and then I can't remember how Heat Miser and Snow Miser come into this one um I think they're trying to stop Santa I can't remember I love that song but um I love the original Santa Claus is coming to town way more than this one like Santa Claus is coming to town I will watch that any day of the year this i might watch for christmas i might not <laughs> it's just i don't know i don't like the story as much like it's it's okay but it's not as good to me as santa claus is coming to town this how does it is, hold up with the song i like the songs from the other one better because the other one has um one foot in front of the other and um, my world is oh, beginning yeah. today 
And I do love we put this one right behind the Rudolph one, or do we put this one in C tier? I think C -tier? this one is C tier for me. But it's uh, top of C tier for now. Yes, top of C tier. So it's good, but okay. not as good as some of the other ones that we have up there. All right. Next, we have uh, Frosty the Snowman, and yeah. I actually don't remember this being this... very long. Yeah, this I, is I don't remember one. much from. I'm realizing my Christmas game is a lot worse than my Halloween game. <laughs> Uh, so this is the 1969 one. So this actually, this came out a little bit after Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. And I remember growing up with this one. Um, and I remember, um, so the kids are at school and then a magician comes and the magician is doing magic tricks. And then it, um, the kids are kind of bored with the magician and then they look outside, it's snowing. And then the kids are all happy and excited. And then the magician gets mad because the kids are more excited about snow than they are about his tricks. <laughs> so he's eh. kind of the bad guy. And um, then the kids make Frosty the snowman. And then, of course, you know, um, the bad guy who's a magician is jealous of Frosty. And so he tries to get rid of Frosty. But the kids are like, no, we love Frosty. He's the best. So... It's really cute. <laughs> wow. I sympathize with those kids, because my god, when I was in grade school, nothing was more interesting than snow. I know, right? I loved snow days. And kids don't get snow days anymore. Where do you think this one should go? Mm, I'm gonna put this right next to Rudolph. I don't think our, our next movie needs an introduction. Mm -hmm. I'm just gonna put a clip in for this. Okay. There's so many. This movie is so memeable. It's ridiculous. Next up is Elf from 2003. Oh my god, it's that old. That's yep. insane. I know, right? This movie was made in 2003. Here's here's something. Here's a fun fact I want to talk about about this movie. John Favreau directed this. You know what else John Favreau directed? Iron Man 1, Iron Man 2, uh, The Mandalorian that's coming out on Disney Plus right now. All John Favreau. This is also John Favreau. It's insane. Not only that, but he appears in the movie as a doctor. And I, when I saw that, I was like, I, I like, we watched this last year, and I saw John Favreau in the movie as a doctor. I was like, oh my god, that's John Favreau. Did John Favreau direct this? And I looked it up, and yeah, it, that just blows my mind. I don't know why that's so interesting to me. But uh, this movie's amazing. Uh, it's Will Ferrell being crazy, which is, which I'm not going to say that's, that's what Will Ferrell does best, I feel. Mm -hmm. I agree. There's so many quotes in this that are just, uh, <laughs> just so weird. <laughs> um, and then, uh, but it lo loses some points for me in uh, certain regards. Uh, some like of the I thought, the whole awkward. Like some of the jokes just don't. Yeah, stick. no. The relationship with Renee Zellweger in this movie is—is is that her name? Am I? Oh, no. I, I <laughs> Uh, yeah, there's some awkward, I, mo awkward I'll... moments with that, especially like the shower scene. Like, I feel like that could have been cut out. Yeah, no, um, no, that's weird. That the... yeah, that probably could have and should have been cut out. And then like the weird thing is, she's like, uh, we talked about this recently when we were watching it. But what kind of horrible relationship history do you have to have to go? Man thinks he's an elf. Sure, sounds like a fun date. <laughs> like, no, no, it doesn't. <laughs> yeah. It's weird. it's weird in some parts, but decently funny in others, and it's just kind of it's is, over the top. But I don't I hate think it. This is actually my favorite uh, Will Ferrell movie. Mine too. Yeah, he he makes a very good ma uh, man child. <laughs> oh my god! I don't know. He's just he when he's being like humble and cute. I really like it. Uh, well, where do you think this should go? Because I think it's pretty good. Um, I would say lower A tier, mm -hmm. because I don't okay. think you're going to put this above Santa Claus is Coming to Town. No, I, I actually think that we should, because oh. this, this and the Grinch, the live action Grinch, I feel like really go together, like... They both um, really went out of their way to oh, yeah. like actually make sets and actually like you know uh, make like cool like, oh. Christmas um, you know live action. The, oh yeah, 
especially like the, the scene where the Buddy scene decorates the yeah. store. Yeah, like that's pretty cool. I also find myself really liking the manager of that toy store for just his lines are just <laughs> so great. Yeah, I put this behind the live action Grinch. What about you? Wow. All right. Yeah, I'm down for that. Okay. I think that works. Okay. So That's it's upper A tier right behind the live action Grinch movie. Yes. All right. Uh, so speaking of live action, I think we have a, a good chunk of them. Yep. Uh, so the first one is going to be Home Alone 1. And, and uh, I might be in the minority of, for this movie because I like Home Alone 2 a lot better than Home Alone 1. I don't like Home Alone 1 nearly as much. Uh, I like there's a creepy neighbor it's the same sort of home alone formula but i don't know why i just prefer the version where he's in new york i i i really couldn't tell you hmm. i i like both of them i think the same so um but i think most people have seen home alone by now you know of course it's like you know the kid just left home alone and then he uh puts traps down for robbers that are trying to break into his house and the robbers for whatever reason do not have a gun so they yeah, dumbly like, fall for the child's traps it's, and yeah it's just it's shenanigans and hilarious and yeah i mean who yeah. hasn't seen home alone at i this know point? right okay so where are we putting home alone uh i would put home alone mm, i would say above uh, Right below Olive. Really? Below Olive? Yeah, but where would you put it? Uh, I was saying, I would put this above Beauty and the Beast. Wow, okay. I mean, it's, sure, it's, classic, I'll... it's classic Home Alone. Yeah, the, 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 it just being a Christmas classic, I feel, could bump it up a few points for me. Okay, but next, though, Home Alone 2. Oh, my God, I like this so much better. Just a kid in New York with his dad's credit, with his father's stolen credit card. Uh, like Tim, Tim Curry is this. in the movie. <laughs> Tim, Tim Curry literally, like, okay, if Home Alone 1 for me is like a 4, Tim Curry makes this movie an 11. It's so good. Uh, just, uh, and you have a limo outside waiting with a pizza. A pizza. A pizza. And then just, oh my god, so many, there's the Tim Curry lines, just picturing yourself as a kid in New York with a credit card that has how, who cares how much money on it because you're a kid. Right. And just like tricking, um, uh, just like tricking people into thinking that your dad is around and yeah. it's amazing. And then uh, the whole, the angle with the toy store is really cute too, because the bad guys, instead of like, they're not interested in breaking into a house. They... In the first one, they're like, we're, we're going to scope out this house and break into it and then, like, steal stuff. But that's not the case here. The only – the thing that's happening here is they just want to rob a toy store. The toy store takes the money that they make on Christmas uh, or during the holidays and they donate it to charity. They give it to, like, an orphanage or something. Mm -hmm. So Kevin is like, those kids are going to get that money for – like, it's very hero-esque yeah. or something. Mm -hmm. it, it, it sort of, like, paints Kevin in this heroic light for – uh, doing that and he basically starts doing the stuff again and you get sort of references to the first movie and a couple of other extra bits and yes. hilarity ensues so where are we putting this one i would actually put this uh above elf okay uh, so right in right between, below right in between yeah. elf and um the grinch yes okay i think uh, uh how the grinch stole christmas with jim carrey is a little bit better than this but mm -hmm. uh but it's really close Okay, number 16, Eloise at Christmas Time. And I put this one on the list because I absolutely love Eloise. Oh my gosh, she's adorable. And this also takes place, I think, in the exact same... Um, I think this takes place in the exact same hotel that uh, um, Home Alone 2 takes place in. <laughs> oh my I think gosh. It's like, yeah, it's the same hotel, except um, this one is with Eloise. And then she has a Nana who is, I believe, the actress who played Mary Poppins, and I love her too. And Eloise just, um, she goes around and she buys Christmas presents for all the people that live and work in the hotel, and then also she's trying to get together 
Um, the hotel, um, the, the hotel, uh, owner, I think it is, his daughter, and then an old boyfriend of hers, she's trying to get them together, and it's just super cute, and a lot of holiday fun, and also kind of similar to Home Alone, but, like, um, I don't know, I just think Eloise is a lot more charming to me, um, but I know that you would never let me put it above Home Alone 2, so I, I would like to put I mean... this above Home Alone 1, though. That's fine. Do you want okay. to put it at the top of B tier or at yes, the bottom of, of B tier? tier? Top of B. Okay. This is top of That's B fair. for me. Super cute. Definitely recommend this to anybody who... I do remember it being very cute. Person. So, number 17, I will let you introduce. Okay, so number 17, we have White Christmas, which is... Gosh, what year was this? 1954. Uh, mm -hmm. so it is, it is old, but it is, it is really, I think it's really good. The, it's got, uh, it's sort of in that era of where all the actors were expected to, like, sing and dance and stuff. <laughs> Funny enough, except Ben Crosby, because Ben Crosby's in this movie. And, and he's just a really uh, good singer. <laughs> yeah, he's just a really good singer. Um, and, uh, so he didn't have to do that stuff, but I think most other people had to do little it'll even make crosby dances a little bit like but it's uh it's really good it's a like singing dancing musical numbers i would i would probably go so far as to call this a musical uh yeah, I think, sort I of think somewhat too yeah they have a lot of musical numbers in this oh yeah and they're they're great there is a part in this movie that always gets me towards the end uh i highly recommend watching it yes um and it's i think um, it's it's uh, about two guys who are um, performers and then there are two ladies who are performers and they somewhat get together and then um, there is a general from the uh, two men's army days and it's about um, basically making sacrifices kind of for other people and um, it's, mm -hmm. just, it's just so charming it's wholesome very wholesome um, there are a couple old jokes in there that are probably kind of inappropriate for today, but like, yeah, it's this is, it's this is an older movie. It's um, 1954, so I yeah, I it's it's I old give it a pass and because it's old. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, it's it's got some stuff, but it's I think but overall it's, it's a, a overall it's got a really wholesome and uh, wonderful message. Um, yes. where so where do you think this one goes? Mm -hmm. I put this above Scrooge uh, or the um, Scrooge McDuck. Right? You can talk about this next one. Okay, and that also brings us to our next one, which is also a classic Christmas, and uh, it is It's a Wonderful Life, 1946. Now, this is like the classic movie besides probably Chris, like a Christmas Carol or The Grinch. Like, it's it's the movie that everyone pretty much watches. Oh, yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah, and it's referenced everywhere. Like, this movie oh, yeah. is referenced so much. Oh, my gosh. Uh, it's about a man who um, makes a bunch of sacrifices for other people and is down on his luck around Christmas time. And it almost ends his life but um something happens and uh he basically gets to see what life is like if he never lived um what yep. life would be like if he was never around and he never made those sacrifices for other people and he gets a second chance at life and it's just a um it's just a, a very beautiful movie in uh, my opinion I think it was mm -hmm. probably the first movie to do that, um, uh, where like someone like went back and looked at life um, through the lens yeah, of not for being sure. there. Yeah, I uh, definitely recommend people see this at least once in their lifetime. Absolutely, it's a classic Christmas movie. It's this... referenced everywhere. I would put this above White Christmas. Like right above it, mm -hmm. in that uh, spot right above it. Yeah, actually, I think I'd put this above the Grinch. That's fair, but below Elf. But below Elf. <laughs> <laughs> Just because Funny Elf, enough, I think Elf, Elf also references this movie. 
I, I, bet, I bet it does too. Um, Elf and the other ones are rewatchable. Like you watch them any time of the year and, you know, have a laugh. This is like, I don't know, I just feel like people should watch it at least once. And it's, it's just really good for um, an older movie and um, having the message that it does. And now we move on to our 19th one, which is Miracle on 34th Street, 1947. So this I think came I've out, seen this one once. This came out a year after It's a Wonderful Life. Um, so It's Whoa. a Wonderful Life is the oldest one on our list, I'm pretty sure. And then this is the second oldest on our list. Um, and this yeah. is also referenced everywhere. And it's another classic one. Um, this is about a little girl who lives with her mother and her mother is one of the head people of the Thanksgiving Day Parade and the Santa in that parade <laughs> turns out to be a bit drunk and can't perform his normal Santa duties so for some reason the real Santa is in town. I can't remember why um, but he takes over he just the happens role. To be there. <laughs> yeah, he takes over the role of Santa Claus and then the girl's like, wow, you like, you know, like or like people are like wow you really seem like the real Santa and um, but the mother like doesn't really believe in Santa and like you know doesn't really um, teach her daughter to um, uh, what's the term um, make believe like or have like an active ima imagination essentially <laughs> so mm -hmm. um, Santa helps like uh, bring that kind of magic to life basically and um th there is another miracle on 34th street like this movie has actually been um done many times um but this is the original i'm pretty sure um yeah because it's like what did i say 19 like 40 1947 so yeah this is the this is the original one it, i believe it's in black and white or it was originally black and white. They may have colored it. Um, but uh, it's really cute. Oh, and there, there's a famous scene in this. Santa Claus goes to court in this movie, and the evidence that they use in this movie is hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands, of letters um, that children have wrote to Santa Claus as evidence in court that basically he is the real Santa Claus. And that's referenced a lot in um, media. So, where are we putting this one? I don't know. You decide. You're the expert on okay. this one. This one, I'm or you're the, you know. Uh, Frosty the Snowman. Uh, behind Frosty? Yes. Um, because there are several versions of this. Um, this one's my favorite, but um, there are other ones that are also really good. And, um, it, I mean, it's okay. It's not as good as some of the other ones that we have on this list, but I definitely would give it a watch at least once. Number 20, which, Brad, I'll let you do. Number 20 is the Polar Express. I do not care much for this movie, in all honesty. Uh, <laughs> I actually really, I like the like original book, because uh, I'm pretty sure it was based on a book. It was it like was. a short story. It was. Um, and it's it's really nice because it's like you know a train pulls up in front of your house and takes you to to the north pole which is really cool mm -hmm. and it's all this like magic and stuff but i cannot get past the animation in this movie it is so jarring to look at and it's just mm, ugh. It was... some of it is not good most mm -hmm. of it is not good it's actually it's all not good none of, just don't <laughs> look at this movie don't watch this movie <laughs> Oh if you watch God. this movie, do an <laughs> no, audio version. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. When I first saw this movie, it was good. Like, the animation would, was good for its time, but it's obviously very outdated. Um, I yeah. love the hot chocolate scene. Uh, I love the theme that and could, the story. Um, love the bell. Love Santa Claus. Um, love the train. It's just a really cute premise. Um, but yeah, sadly, like... Uh, the humans in this kind of fall into the uncanny valley area where they just look a little too strange and yeah. it can really put people off. So this is probably going to be our D tier. Yep. This That's is probably fair. Our, probably our one D tier. <laughs> probably. 
yeah. it's not that great. Like it's it's I think you hit it on the nail on the head. It was good, and then it wasn't after it aged. Good idea. Uh, but next, just, just old. Okay, next. Yes. Yeah, not great execution. Good story. Good original story though. Uh, next up is something that came out last year. Actually, I'm pretty yeah. sure this was last this year, right? This is the newest one on our list. Yeah, and it is. You're gonna think I'm controversial for where I'm gonna put it after we talk about it a little bit. Okay. But it is uh, number. What number are we on? We are on number nine or no twenty one. <laughs> number twenty one is is uh Klaus. Klaus? Klaus? Klaus. I think it's Klaus. Klaus. Mm -hmm. So it came out in twenty nineteen on Netflix. It is animated. It is incredibly cute, and it is about a postal worker, which is not where you expect a Christmas movie to start. But he moves to this horrible town called Smirensburg, and everyone there hates each other. There's a giant feud between two families that's been going on since there were people there. The dawn of time. And, yeah, it's crazy. So, so the whole movie is about him going to that town because he is a spoiled rich kid, and his dad um, is like... Uh, Grow up, sonny boy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because his dad runs the postal service, and he's like, okay, so here's what's going to happen. I'm going to ship you off to Smirensburg. And if you get, what is it, 6,000, 5,000 letters? I it's think a, 6, some, Yeah, like 6,000 letters. Then you can um, uh, you can come back and, you know, you've done the work and uh, uh, you're good and you can be rich or whatever. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'll pay for your stuff. Yep. So he ships him off there, and the postal worker going there sort of has. It starts to become like. At first, it's like, oh, I got to get my letters and get out of here. And then it starts to become like really cute, and his motivation starts to change, and everyone eventually starts to warm up to each other and become friends and stuff. And it's adorable. Uh, he meets uh, the, the, the title of the movie, Klaus, which is a man in the What's woods me? who makes toys. And. Uh, they start delivering them. There's, so it's. Cute. I don't want to go over too much of the intricacies because I think everyone should watch this. Not even just once, but every Christmas. Not maybe not even every Christmas. Just watch it a lot because <laughs> I think it's really good. Yes, uh, and I'm it. actually going to go so far as to say this is S tier. Yeah, I actually, I think I agree with you. I love the animation in this. Um, oh yeah, if, animation's if amazing. If you have seen this movie and you haven't seen like the behind the scenes of this movie, I definitely recommend it. Yes. It's very good. I put it below Muppet Christmas Carol, though. Agreed. I'm glad that we're on the same page with that, because <laughs> I was like, I'm sitting here going like, this movie's better than How the Grinch Stole Christmas, better yeah. than Elf, better than Home Alone, better than It's Wonderful Life. Movie. Like, it's so good. Yeah. It's it's incredible that something that's good could come out in 2019. I know. Okay, uh, so... Back to not as good movies, though, yes. <laughs> is next on our list. Number 22, whatever number we're at, is uh, Arthur Christmas. Oh, my God. Why is this movie the way it is? Everyone is an <laughs> asshole in it. The animation isn't bad. The animation's okay. I mean, I don't want to I don't want to solely put just be like, oh, no. it's a British movie, so everyone's an asshole. Like, Yo. I don't, that's not, that's it not, I don't. <laughs> Okay, it's British, and everyone in the movie happens to be an asshole. <laughs> Except for, like, the main character. He's yeah. not an asshole, and the but elf. he's a loser. Do what? And the elf. The elf is not She's sweet. She's cute. Oh, yeah, she's kind of cool. Yeah, no, okay. I'll, I'll give you that. That that character was interesting. Uh, it's an elf who, like... There, so, the movie premise is essentially, like... Christmas has become very automated. It's uh, it's a whole thing, and then they, they forget somebody, and then they have to get <laughs> what? They pretty much have like almost like a spaceship. See, they have like a like it's yeah, like a it's a giant spaceship thing, sort of. It's like it looks like a spaceship. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. the The whole premise of the movie, though, they forget a kid, mm -hmm. and then they're like, some of them are like, here's where the asshole part comes in. Some of them, because it's all, it's a family of Santas, it's a lineage of Santa, mm -hmm. and some of them are like, fuck it, it's one kid who cares, and the one guy who's the loser is like, that it's Christmas, you can't do that, you gotta go deliver the present. So he does everything he can to go deliver the present, but um, this, it's a bike, and it becomes unwrapped, like. I don't know how many times, and every single time the elf re-wraps it. Mm -hmm. It's 
with it's... three pieces of sticky tape. Does does she say that yeah. like specifically? Oh my so. god. Okay. Yeah, that elf character is like the best character in this movie. Yeah, she's hands down easily. Yes. I... C tier. Yeah, but top of C, right? Top of C. Next, number twenty three. I think we're in our more television oriented section yes. now. Yes. But the first one of that is Charlie Brown Christmas, which is a uh, super classic, and I can't remember it. <laughs> I remember um, that he goes to get a Christmas tree for their play. Um, like a but, stick. Yeah, it, because he, he, I think he thought it was cute, or he thought they needed some love, so he decided to pick out that tree. But then all the kids are like, oh, why did you pick out the lame tree? Like, you know, we wanted a cool one, and like... Charlie Brown, you you're stupid. Like you picked up the wrong tree, and then mm. and Charlie Brown's like, no, it's a good tree. And then like you know he he goes and puts a blanket around it, and then puts an ornament on it, and then it topples over, and he's like, oh no, I killed it, and he gets all sad. Uh. And then like the kids come back, and they're like, you know, it wasn't that bad of a tree. And then they all pitch in and help decorate it, and sing a song and then it becomes really cute and adorable and that's pretty much what I remember. <laughs> that's more than me. So where are we putting this? Um, hmm. i probably also put this at C tier. Upper C. Uh, okay, next up, number, what number? 24? Is, I don't know. We're on a number. It's a number. It's, a number. it's Kung Fu Panda Holiday. It came out Yay! in 2010. Yay! I don't know why that one's like special to celebrate. <laughs> Because it's Kung Fu Panda Holiday. Kung Fu Panda Holiday. This, is, this uh, one is one of my favorites. It's pretty good. Um, it's got. Uh, it's it's kind of all about like Poe's relationship with his dad and the tip and like the sort of traditional holiday celebrations. And Poe po po has a bunny that wants to die. <laughs> yeah, and a suicidal bunny, which is I don't even know why. It's the best it's, part. It's, it's amazing. Oh my god! And everyone should see it. <sighs> Oh, and I think it's the this he's the same voice actor who voices um Fix It Felix in Wreck It Ralph. Oh, is he? Yeah, I think it is. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I need to look that up. But um I love this holiday special. Um and I love the Kung Fu Panda series. And yeah, they got Jack Black back to Yes, they got a lot of I think stuff. they got most of the of the cast back for this, which was mm -hmm. crazy. I know, right? But the the whole premise is Poe has his holiday traditions with his family, but now he also has dragon warrior duties. And there's this whole feast full of Kung Fu masters that he has to get ready uh, and everything has to be perfect for. And uh, it's just trying to balance like, and this is, this one was really like too real when it came to this stuff. Cause it's like balancing like your responsibility stuff with like your tradition stuff and it's Family like stuff. two things at the same time and it's juggling all this stuff and it's hectic i don't want to put it above white christmas sound good okay, okay. yes you do the next one okay number 25 is winnie the pooh and christmas 2 1991 oh my god i love this one it is so cute oh my goodness so Oh, I'm noticing a pattern of cuteness with most of these. Yes, I love it. Well, actually, the one after this isn't so cute. Um, but, no, but it's awesome. Yes, but this one is a, is really, really cute. So this one is about um, so Christopher Robin and Winnie the Pooh and Piglet and all of the, their friends um, are getting uh, ready for Christmas and they're writing a wish list on um, a piece of paper. Or they're, they're writing their list to Santa. And then... Um, who forgets to ask for a wish and he keep he um has to go and find the list to uh put his um present on the list because he forgot to write one down and then um they accidentally lose the list so then they're like oh no santa's not gonna know what we want so Pooh dresses up as santa and then tries to deliver presents that he and piglet made <laughs> to um all of his friends <laughs> because um, they accidentally lost the list trying to um, put his present on the list. <laughs> yeah, um, that's some determination though from Pooh. Yes, and this is actually like really funny. Like they end up like <laughs> putting Eeyore on a Christmas tree <laughs> as an angel. Oh my it's God. Really funny. And then like uh, Winnie the Pooh ends up uh, leaving to go to the North Pole to directly give the list to Santa. And then his friends get sad because they're not going to be able to spend Christmas with Pooh. 
and um, uh, they're happy when he uh, ends up coming back because he lost the list again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Pooh Bear wouldn't have been able to find his way to the North Pole. Yeah, it's really, Even if he really didn't. cute. Um, definitely recommend this to people. Okay, where are we playing it? Probably right above the Kung Fu. No, no, no. Right below the Kung Fu Panda. So Hello, next on the list, though, number 26. This is the Batman the Animated Series Christmas special. I think it was one of the first episodes, if I remember correctly. If I'm not 100% sure on that. might have been the first. I don't remember. But this is Christmas with the Joker. And this is where... It's very good. This is where the song... Jingle bells, Batman smells, Robin laid an egg, the Batmobile lost a wheel, and the Joker got away. It's from. <laughs> yeah, that's from this, this yes. episode, and it's classic. Uh, it's so classic that Robin wants to go back to the Batcave to watch It's a Wonderful Life. <laughs> yep. He actually references it like, when we said everyone references that movie, we were not joking. It's in Batman the Animated Series, for Christ's sake. Yep. And um, this one is probably the, one of the darker ones that we have on this list. Maybe not the darkest, because some of the Scrooge stuff is pretty dark. But um, yeah. this is one of the darker ones that we have on this list. And um, it's really uh, cool, because like, Batman goes out to uh, look for crime. But then like he finds out, oh, there's actually like not any crime going on, because it's Christmas time. And then Robin's like, let's go back and watch It's a Wonderful Life. And then Batman's like, no, we got to keep looking for crime. And even though there well, is it's none. it's also because the Joker then, just broke out. And yeah, and then, yeah, the Joker broke out. And then they're like, oh, great, we got to go stop the Joker. So it's about them stopping the Joker and then eventually getting to watch It's a Wonderful Life. And it's really cute and cool yes. and awesome. Yeah, Batman the Animated Series, but with Christmas. It's very nice. Yes, we like it a lot. I'm going to put it behind Rudolph the red Nose Reindeer. Because I realize that we have, like, I, I like Rudolph better. All right, that's fair. Yeah. All right, next on the list, 27. Yeah, number 27 yes. is the Fairly Odd Parents Christmas special, which had you seen it before I showed I it to you recently? I've never seen it before until you showed that to me. Yeah, it's, I, I enjoy it. What, your first impressions of it, what did you think about it? It was cute. I liked it. Um, I didn't really grow up with Fairly Odd Parents because uh, I didn't really grow up with cable television. But uh, I thought it was really cute, and I can see why um, people really like it. Yeah, it's the whole premise is kind of similar to the short story in the Mickey thing you were talking about earlier. Right. Timmy wishes that it could be Christmas every day. His fairies grant that wish, which leads to horrible consequences because Santa gets overworked, and it's Christmas every day. Chaos ensues. Timmy has to go and find Santa at the North Pole and mm -hmm. uh, get Christmas to stop. Meanwhile, all the other holidays are like, when is it going to be our turn? It's Christmas forever. We're mad. We're going to go get Santa. So there's this whole, like, get to the North Pole so Santa can be saved from the other holidays who are mad at him and uh, try to stop Christmas because it keeps happening. Uh, but the whole shtick is the all the fairies of the universe uh, give their magic to Santa so he can actually do all that stuff in one night. But with it being Christmas, Christmas every day, they don't get any magic anymore. So the fairies don't have magic. Santa has all the magic, and kids keep asking for stuff. And they actually get Santa to stop uh, doing Christmas by asking for December 26th, which I thought was pretty <laughs> clever. Yeah, it's, uh, it's funny. Which is, I think it's a cute ending to it. I agree. Because so... all the kids come together to protect Santa and help everything. And then they uh, wish for the next day, and then it becomes the next day. Also, yeah. while Santa is not jolly and does not have magic, he is he looks like a business CEO. It's weird, but it's funny. <laughs> yeah. So where are we putting this one? I want to go lower A tier, but I don't know if you'll let me put it that high. Can we do it in top of B tier? Yeah. Okay. So above Eloise. Good. All right. You're, you're, this last one is all you. Okay. So this is the last one on our list, and it is Hey Arnold, Arnold's Christmas 1996. And I'm a big Hey Arnold fan, that's why I put this on here. And this particular episode is really, really cute, um, very wholesome. Uh, one of the boarders that live in Arnold's grandpa's boarding house um, lost his daughter years ago, and the episode is about Arnold reuniting them for Christmas. And it's just super cute. And also, um, Helga in this one, who is a bully, ends up. Um, 
actually doing something nice for Arnold for Christmas as well um, because he's doing something nice for someone else and um, it's just really really wholesome and cute and if anyone's a Hey Arnold fan that has never seen this episode I definitely recommend it um, and this one I will put I'll put this one at C tier uh, C tier I'm yeah. letting you get free reign on this and you I'm, I, don't know. I mean like there are so many good things on here is the thing so I'm gonna put this like right behind um, Charlie Brown Christmas we don't even remember stuff from <laughs> Charlie Brown Christmas. Right, but um, I don't know. Like, as an individual episode, well, like you do, I it's know. it's like it's good, but like it, I don't know. Like, I feel like Charlie Brown Christmas is more um, traditional Christmas. Um, and Hey Arnold, I like more as a series than just like the individual episodes. But it's a good one, and it definitely earns its spot on our tier list. So, alright, that's fair. Yep. And these are all the movies that we like, and um, they're Christmassy, and that we wanted to put on a list. Mm-hmm. I think it came out pretty good. And that's our Christmas tier list. Hope you all enjoyed, and we'll see you again next time. Bye! Man, I can't believe all those S tiers. <laughs>